We are going to use the population genetics simulation on biologysimulations.com to learn how to test for evolution using the null hypothesis. First, a little background info. Evolution is the change in traits of a population over generations. It is important to note that we are talking about populations, which are groups of individuals of the same species, and not individuals. Also, when we say traits, we are talking about inherited characteristics. In this activity, we are specifically looking at microevolution, which examines changes in allele frequencies over relatively short periods of time, rather than macroevolution, which includes speciation and typically takes place over long periods of time. The null hypothesis states that there is no significant difference between samples. This isn't intended to be a statistics tutorial, so we'll be fairly basic with the explanations of statistical terms. When we use the term significant, it essentially means that the conclusion is probably not due to chance. For this test, the samples we are using are the starting and ending allele frequencies for a specific gene. Note that we are only looking at a single gene here. If the frequencies change over time, then evolution is occurring. If not, then the population is at equilibrium. Again, this is only examining the evolution for one gene. For this example, we have two possible outcomes when testing the null hypothesis. We can reject the null hypothesis uh, which means that there is probably a significant difference between the samples. The ending frequencies in this case are not the same as the starting frequencies, so evolution did occur during the time period. The other possibility is that we fail to reject the null hypothesis. In this case, there probably is not a significant difference between the samples. So the starting and ending frequencies are the same, and evolution did not occur for that gene in that time period. For the purpose of our example, we'll be using chi-squared. As we're testing the null hypothesis, our expected values will be the starting number of alleles, and the observed values will be the final allele numbers. Let's run a trial on the simulation and get some data to work with. For the population genetic simulation, we have a population of fictional organisms. The gene being studied here is for color. There are two alleles, red and blue, and there are three possible phenotypes. Red and blue are the homozygotes, and the heterozygotes are purple. So we'll close the introduction and take a look at our starting parameters we are going to leave the red allele starting frequency at 0.5, so we'll have an even split between the two alleles. We are going to leave the population size at 10, and we'll set the number of generations to 20. Then we will come up here to the Run Simulation button, and we'll click this to get some data. Since we only plan on using the allele frequencies for now, we can click on the phenotype frequencies to remove those lines, which just makes it a little easier to look at. Then hover over one of the lines to get the numerical data. The final frequency for the red allele is 0.8, and the blue allele is 0.2. These are the numbers we'll be using to calculate the observed values for the chi-squared test. If evolution is not occurring, which is the null hypothesis, then the final frequencies will not be significantly different. We'll be doing the chi-squared calculation using the number of alleles, not the frequencies. The population size is 10, which means there are a total of 20 alleles in the population because each individual has two copies of the gene. To get the number of alleles, multiply the frequency by the total number of alleles. So in this case, we have 20 alleles, multiply that by 0.5, and that is 10 alleles. So the expected value is 10 alleles for both the red 
and blue alleles. To get the observed values, multiply the final frequency by 20. The final frequency for red is 0.8, so the final number of red alleles is 16. The final frequency for the blue allele is 0.2, so the final number of blue alleles is 4. Now we'll plug the expected and observed values into the chi-squared equation for both the red and blue alleles. And then we'll calculate that to get our final chi-squared value of 7.2. The chi-squared value by itself doesn't really mean anything, which is where the critical value table comes in. This is the table found on the equation sheet for the AP Biology exam. This one is pretty small, but much larger tables can be found online. If you're a high school biology student or teacher, chances are this will take care of most of your chi-squared needs. To find the critical value, we need to know two pieces of information, our degrees of freedom and the p-value. The degrees of freedom is the number of categories minus one. We have two categories, red and blue, so we have one degree of freedom. The p-value is the probability that the results could be due to chance. There's a lot that can be said about p-values and their use in scientific statistical tests, but again, this isn't a stats tutorial, so I'm not going to go into it. In this context, we are going to use a p-value of 0.05, which is typically what will be used in most high school biology situations. Looking at the chi-square table, the one degree of freedom column, the 0.05 p-value row gives us a critical value of 3.84. To interpret our results, we compare our chi-squared value to the critical value. If the chi-squared value is greater than the critical value, the null hypothesis is rejected, and we conclude that there is a difference between the samples. If the chi-squared value is less than or equal to the critical value, then we fail to reject the null hypothesis. In this case, there is probably not a difference between our samples. For our example, the chi-squared value is 7.2, and the critical value is 3.84. So in this case, we reject the hypothesis. Based on that, we conclude that evolution is occurring for this gene in the time frame studied. Let's look at a second example. In this case, we're going to set the population size to 200, but the other parameters will be the same as before. For this run, the final allele population is 0.495 for the red, and 0.505 for the blue. This time, we have a total of 400 alleles in the population. Because we're testing the null hypothesis, which means that there isn't any change over time, our expected values will be 200. For the red allele, our observed value is 198, and for blue, it is 202. Then we plug these values into the chi-squared equation and get a value of 0.04. This is less than the critical value of 3.84, so we fail to reject the hypothesis. This means that we can conclude that there wasn't a significant change in the allele frequencies, and so the color gene in this population is probably at genetic equilibrium. Keep in mind that this approach only tests the final frequencies, so it doesn't necessarily account for fluctuations that are occurring over the course of the tested time period. Also, these examples only looked at allele numbers, but you could also try using the test for phenotypes. Finally, if you are using this to test if certain parameters are likely to lead to evolution, remember that one benefit of simulations is the ability to run many trials relatively quickly. The more trials you run, the more clear a picture you can get of the range of possible results.